the rise of the cryptos is an expression of fiat rejection. Our mission at SD Bullion is clear. The lowest cost gold and silver available online. While we do not have pretty blue boxes, free shipping on every order, or glamorous gold and silver infomercials, SD Bullion has the lowest prices that may save you hundreds on your next order. So before you make your next investment, do the math and join the over 40,000 new customers who have recently made the switch to SD Bullion. Why pay more? Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with SilverDoctors.com. And with us today is Rob Kirby from Kirby Analytics. Rob, thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure to be with you again, Elijah. All right. Well, I'd first like to cover viewers' questions. Now, I had a lot of viewers submit questions, and this one is a really interesting question. The viewer is wanting to know, they say that you have talked about recently how you are predicting a rush of people calling for physical delivery of silver from the COMEX. And they ask, but couldn't the COMEX simply settle in cash if this were to happen? Hey, absolutely, they can. Uh, but that, that would be uh, a default spelt a different way. So, uh, I mean, ult ultimately, and, 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 and to, be, to be completely accurate, I don't think I've really been on record saying I expect there to be a, a rush of uh, calls for delivery on COMEX because I have long stated that the metal that the COMEX – uh, puts in their window as being available to back up the contracts that they allowed to be naked, naked shorted, uh, that metal I don't believe really is for sale. And I've long been on record saying uh, uh, that the metal in, in COMEX warehouses, if, if, if indeed it really is there in the amounts they claim it to be, I don't really believe any of it's actually for sale. The COMEX is a fraud. Uh, the COMEX is a fraud which is being, which be, which is being uh, uh, perpetrated and supported by the highest levels of the U.S. government, specifically the U.S. Treasury, and, and, and bought and paid for uh, regulators who sit on their hands and, and, and allow agents of the U.S. government to, to uh, uh, perpetuate um, uh, fraud – uh, in, in contravention of commodities law in the United States of America. And, and the reason this is done is because the U.S. Treasury, working with the Federal Reserve, want to make the historical alternatives to fiat money, when fiat money is debased, the go-to asset historically is physical precious metal. Uh, but the, the price of physical precious metal up till now has been set in fraudulent paper markets where, where regulators who are supposed to prevent such events from happening uh, actually allow agents of the U.S. government sell unfathomable amounts of uh, uh, naked futures contracts or, or paper metal uh, uh, in the amounts that physically do not exist and never will exist. So, so, so listen. The, the the metals the metals prices that we are shown on the COMEX exchange are, are basically the figment of the U.S. government's imagination, and they have nothing to do with representing the true scarcity of physical precious metal in the real world. And this this is a hoax that is perpetrated on mankind to make the U.S. dollar look like it is suitable as the world's reserve currency to settle international trade accounts. So th this, this is the game that's being played, but this, this is also the game that more and more uh, industry participants are coming to the realization uh, uh, just, just how dire this mismanagement and this fraudulent operation really is. And we're, and we're starting to see, uh, Elijah, we're starting to see this manifest itself in, in other ways. Uh, and I call this the, the law of unintended consequences. The, the, the world's reserve currency and fiat currencies in general have been mismanaged so badly and, and people have been uh, uh, deflected from going to the historical alternatives to such, to such an extreme extent that we've seen the rise of 
uh, cryptocurrencies. And we've, we've seen these cryptocurrencies, uh, and there's quite a few of them uh, to, you know, that could, could be named. Uh, we don't have time to name them all because there are literally that many of them. Uh, but let's just say this. I gave an interview a week ago about cryptocurrencies with Greg Hunter. And at the time, I listed the top four cryptocurrencies in that interview because there were only four of them that had market capitalizations in excess of $1 billion. And so that was about eight days ago. Today, there are seven cryptocurrencies with market capitalizations of over $1 billion. And these, these cryptocurrencies have seen rises in value in the last three months uh, uh, the one that had risen the most in percentage terms was up over 60%. The, the next biggest rise was, uh, I believe it was Ethereum, and it was up over 20 uh, times in the last three months. And the, uh, the next one, I believe, was Ethereum Lite, which was up 13 times. And, of, and at the time, of the, of the four uh, biggest market cap uh, cryptos, uh, the one with the smallest percentage gain in the last three months was actually Bitcoin, and it because it, it had only doubled. So, you know, and and what what the rise of these cryptocurrencies represents, and 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 I don't want people to get confused thinking that I'm advocating cryptocurrencies, but I'm I'm only stating that. The rise of the cryptos is an expression of fiat rejection. People want an alternative because people know that the existing uh, means it has been so badly managed and so badly debased that they're, they're looking for alternatives. Uh, in the sovereign market, uh, which fuels more of the physical trade in precious metal, I can report to your listeners that the physical market for precious metal in the sovereign market, where, where big amounts of metal get transacted, uh, has never been tighter. And, and this, this is something that ultimately will be the Achilles heel of, of the people who have been trying to uh, uh, fraudulently suppress precious metals prices at some point, we will see a, a, uh, uh, um, a, a breakaway where physical metal will not be sold for the fraudulently uh, uh, deduced uh, paper prices. And that day is coming. And my guess is taking a read from what's occurring in, the, in crypto land, um, that day is coming very soon. Now, speaking of cryptocurrencies, this viewer is wanting to know your thoughts on the recently launched OneGram. It's a cryptocurrency called OneGram, where it's actually backed by gold. Each coin is backed by one gram of gold. Have you heard of this one? Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't heard of this specific one, but my I have a I have a general I have a, a general uh, dis, distrust towards uh, the cryptocurrencies. Because uh, fundamentally, I believe, uh, like the Internet was a creation of DARPA, which is the U.S. Uh, military industrial complex, uh, the dark operations side of, of that. And uh, I do believe uh, and, and, I, and I think I'm quite on quite solid ground to state that there does exist such a thing as an Internet kill switch. And. Uh, I, I've stated to some of my confidants uh, in the past that it wouldn't put it past me to see these people utilize an internet kill switch to quash uh, an uprising in in cryptos if it became uh, if it became you know to, not to their liking. To which people have said to me, "There's no way they could ever kill the internet," and you know I think about that. And I let that idea roll around in my head. And I think in terms of the globalists who control our monetary system as it is today are the same, are the same people who believe in their writings that they can win a nuclear war. Uh, they believe that the ideal population for this planet is 500 million instead of the 7 billion-ish that we have today. 
and then and then and then I ask myself the question again: Are these really the kind of people that would never use an internet kill switch? And everyone should think about that. Now, moving on here, this question gets back to the comics. Now, you were talking about how the comics can settle in cash if there was this rush of people wanting physical delivery of metal. Now, this viewer is wanting to know about the Shanghai Gold Exchange. Do they only settle in physical or can they settle in cash as well? Uh, now, if you're asking me the technical ins and outs, uh, 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 you know, that the, the Shanghai Gold Exchange could invoke, I, I honestly, that's above my pay grade. I mean, I, I'm aware that the uh, Shanghai Gold Exchange is 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 fundamentally a, a more physical exchange than uh, <laughs> than the COMEX, which is completely a paper exchange. But what what laws they have, or what uh, what the rules are uh, uh, regarding settlement if if metal isn't available, I can't speak directly to that. Um, all, all I know is that people that I'm uh, quite well acquainted with in the in the procurement business have told me that uh, procuring large amounts of physical precious metal are, are becoming more difficult as as the days and weeks move along. All right, moving on here. This viewer is wanting to know about the rumor that's going on that J.P. Morgan is stashing physical silver. There's this thought that J.P. Morgan has a stash of. 600 million ounces of silver bullion. What are your thoughts on this rumor out there? Elijah, my, my thought on that uh, uh, J.P. Morgan amassing massive physical uh, silver uh, comment, I, I'd like to revisit a, a comment made by none other than Blythe Masters, who used to, used to run the uh, derivatives uh, for J.P. Morgan a number of years ago. When she was confronted about J.P. Morgan's outsized uh, position in in uh, precious metals futures, she she made the quite infamous comment: "Is that they don't they don't have any positions of their own? Uh, they they only uh, trade client positions." So so the reality. Uh, if if we're to take Blythe Masters at face value, which maybe we shouldn't, uh, but if we do take her her comment at face value, uh, the, the the likelihood that any that any physical position that J P Morgan uh, does have is very likely in the name of a client, and wouldn't shock me if it was actually in the name of the Exchange Stabilization Fund or the U S Treasury. Or it may very well be that the Federal Reserve themselves are, are front running what they know is, is a, a, a failing enterprise. And when I speak of failing enterprise, I'm talking about USA Inc., the dollar. All right. And this viewer is wanting to know why so many countries such as China and India are buying physical gold instead of physical silver. Because many people are saying that silver prices are going to skyrocket. But countries are not buying silver, they're buying gold. Why aren't countries hoarding silver as well? Um, it's my understanding that countries are buying silver as well. So I, 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 would, uh, I would actually disagree with that comment. Uh, but the reason they're buying metal is maybe best summed up by uh, 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 failed comedian Kathy Griffin who, who is a, a, a CNN employee uh, who, who was filmed holding a decapitated head of the President of the United States bloodied uh, for mass media consumption. Um, Kathy Griffin and CNN are, are the representatives of the left side of the political spectrum in America. Uh, they collectively are the Democrats and the left side of the political spectrum in America are behaving like terrorists. And this has thrown caution to the wind all over the world because the, the, the left side of the political spectrum in America are behaving like chickens with their heads cut off and are acting like insane idiots. And 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 their their actions their their actions speak for themselves. They are beyond disgusting, and they are an insult to the presidency. They're an insult to humanity, and 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 why these people are not buried in shame is beyond me. 
But I mean, you see, the, the, the kind of the kind of destabilizing crap that we've seen from the left side of the political spectrum in America has has led people like fund manager in Australia, Philip Parker, who runs a two billion dollar fund, Altair Asset Management. This this was in the news just yesterday. He is literally shutting down his two billion dollar fund. He's selling everything and he's returning the money to the stakeholders because he doesn't want to be responsible for what comes next. Because what comes next, according to many learned market participants, is that we are going to see equity markets fail. We're going to see real estate markets fail. And the reason these things are all going to fail is because the gatekeepers, uh, the keepers of the world's reserve currency have utterly disgraced themselves. Uh, they, they are derelicts in their duty, and uh, uh, they too should be ashamed of themselves. And, and these, these people have created the conditions where people who have long, like this, this fund manager I just spoke of, He's got a 30-year track record of always beating the benchmark in, in, in the investment industry. And you know what? He's just shutting it down. He's just saying the, the, risks, the risks outweigh any, any potential gain. And, and this, speaks to how, this speaks to how poorly managed the global financial edifice has been managed. It's, it, is, it is shockingly disturbing to say the least. Now, this fear is wanting to know about where you see precious metals heading in the future. Do you see another deflationary event in the precious metal markets before inflated prices hit? And if the answer is yes, what do you think the lows in gold and silver could be? Let's just put it this way. One of the cryptocurrencies that went up in a, by a factor of 60 times in a three-month period recently, its name is Ripple. And it went from a market capitalization of around 200 million to a market capitalization of 12 billion inside of 90 days. And I would, I would imagine that uh, when, when the shackles are taken off the precious metals, I can see or could, could picture silver going up 10, 20, or 30 times in a similar time frame. But before that happens, the shackles have to come off. And at some point, I do believe it's going to be worth the time uh, for these uh, uh, market rigging fools to actually take the shackles off the precious metals because uh, at some point, their, their game is going to be exposed and, and uh, for, for what it really is. And I do believe that at some point uh, the, the uh, uh, specter of every man for himself uh, might just take over the markets. And in which case silver, which has been held at a artificially uh, low level relative to gold, as in the gold-silver ratio, is at a very unnatural level right now. And I do believe that uh, – uh, there's going to be the natural occurrence of the gold-silver ratio trying to correct itself because in nature, uh, for every ounce of gold that comes out of the Earth's crust, roughly nine or ten ounces of silver come out of the uh, Earth's crust. Uh, that uh, natural or in-nature ratio would suggest that silver should be today possibly one-tenth-ish uh, the price of gold, which would put gold in today's dollars at about $130, just if that 10 to 1 ratio uh, that exists in nature was to prevail in, in price. Um, but then I do believe that both gold and silver will ratchet up very dramatically, many times their current value, once the metals are unshackled. So I look at, on a go-forward basis, the metals prices will go up in nominal terms quite dramatically, but silver on a percentage basis should outperform gold when the shackles come off. This viewer is wanting to know, do you think this can continue for 
maybe, you know, another five years? I mean, I know it's hard to, you know, give a date or anything, but do you see this market manipulation and the stock market and the housing bubbles to continue for, and us not to see this collapse for another five years? Could that happen? I don't see how it can go on for another five years, but the, but the real question here, it's a timing, it's a timing question or a timing call. And you know what? Uh, to, to be completely honest, I would have I would have thought and have thought that the bubbles would have burst or we would have seen some sort of a, a dramatic move before now. And it hasn't happened yet. But just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it won't. And I do believe that if you're if you're looking for a, uh, a harbinger or a, a signpost that things could be close to being at hand. I would say look at the uh, look at the heat on the geopolitical stove which seems to be heating up and look at the rise of the cryptocurrencies uh, uh, and and if their if their rise continues on a parabolic uh, uh, course, uh, I, I think I think it, it could it could actually be the uh, the flashing light that tells us the metals correction is at hand. All right. Well, Rob Kirby, thank you so much for joining us today and answering viewers' questions. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers where they can find you and any last thoughts you'd like to add? Uh, well, uh, my, my, and look, Elijah, I know I sound like a broken record, but you know what? Uh, I, I will continue to sound like a broken record because I do believe that what I'm saying is accurate and, and the right thing to do. Stay long and strong in the physical precious metals. Uh, stay long and strong in your in your general preparedness in terms of uh, uh, maybe some storable food and a means to protect it all. And get to know your neighbors and and stay strong spiritually, because I do believe that what comes is going to test everybody's uh, uh, foundational beliefs. And uh, that's my word of the day. And uh, you can find me on the web at kirbyanalytics.com. Once again, thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure being with you.